All right, guys. Today we have unit two grammar section before we do the exam. Okay. Now, there is an exam coming up. It will be on Monday. Okay. And for that, we need to practice. <clears throat> for example, zero, here says, the school who or where I went is having a reunion. We know that the school, it's a place to gather. So a place where people can stay. It's a place, right? Same, same as, uh, for example, the university, the house, etc. And then we identify that the, the best uh, relative pronoun should be where. The man um, who, who song scored is a professional football, footballer. Okay, so you said who? This yes. One. All right, Gabriel. Let me explain something very important that it might help you or, or the rest of you. We need to see the difference between who and whose because they are very similar. Okay. A good way to do it is by um, pair work. So when we put two words that are very similar, for example, I am the teacher who is in charge, right? And I can also say, I am the teacher whose uh, lessons are online. Wait, somebody made such a, I guess. So his lessons are, I don't know, in English. Okay. All right. Okay. And because the sun is a possession, Gabriel, which one do you choose? Who to refer to the same person or who's to talk about the possession? Who's. Okay. So this is, I think, a very good way to identify when to use whose and when to use who. All right, very good job. So the answer for number one should be whose possession. Okay, can you read number two, please? My mom, who is a baker, made the most amazing cake. Um, and it's a person, in this case we say who, who is a baker. It goes between commas because it's a non-defining relative clause. It's not defining, it's just giving an extra detail. Good answer. The neighborhood where he grew, he grew up hasn't changed at, Ill, at all in 20 years. Very good. We talk about a place, the neighborhood, right? I like people who are honest with me. Yes. People who are honest. Good job. Travel guides that, that tell me a little story of history of a place are the best. Okay. We talk about travel guides. These are packages, for example, or, or, you know, businesses. Mm, but it's not a person, uh, they are not people. Don't confuse with tour guides from the tours. No, it's travel guides, the, you know, the, the, the trips, the, they are organized, these different packages, tourism packages, right? In this case, that is correct. Thank you, you did wonderful, Gabriel. Well, with number two, hey, Andres, good to hear from you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Number two, read the instruction and also the example, please. Okay, complete each sentence with a relative pronoun. Nagir, who we saw early, was blonde. How about the girl, we use who. Now, for number one, what's your call? I am someone which objective in life is to be positive. Andres, I yes. would also say that, but the problem is we talk about the person, not about an object. It says here, I am someone. I am maybe ah. professional, <laughs> but then, but then, hold on, hold on, hang on, hang on a second, uh, Andres. That's something to worry about. A person before the space, and after the space, we talk about the objective. Is it my objective, Andres, or is it your objective, or whose objective is that? Uh, I. <laughs> yes, I am. So, in that case, what do we use? Whose? Aha! Uh -huh, good job, because we talk about a possession. The first person right here is the owner of the possession, the objective. Number two, please. Okay. Pedestrians who don't respect traffic, traffic lights put themselves in danger. Amazing. This is a good explanation. Yes. The city center that attracts a lot of tourists is... No. I don't know which attracts mm -hmm. a lot of tourists is filthy. <laughs> Very good. 
filthy means you know it's, it's hideous it's dirty this is a good way to stop in one second for for this vocabulary when you don't know it uh, and i'm not saying you don't but yes about myself if, if i come across a word that i don't recognize i'll just change it for another one but, but i know in, well i hear it and i read it and i know it's something negative no it's not positive hmm. like the, the, city, the city center which attracts a lot of tourists is beautiful okay it's interesting it doesn't matter if it's not going to affect the use of this uh, pronoun this relative pronoun then i can change it or I just <laughs> it. Uh, okay remote place places uh, which there are a lot of tourists need to be protected mm. so we talk about which let's take a look on uh, the the top the subject before the space we talk about remote places the word places can help you a lot <laughs> or uh, i think that it could be where yes I think it would be where, especially because you have the information places, it's a name like in the, in the example of the school or the house. And also, there aren't a lot of tourists needed to be protected in this case, in these places. So we talk about the places specifically, that, that's the reason to use where. Is he yeah. the one who, which sister works at the chip shop? I'm talking about the one, the one person, is he the one? But it's a person. Ah, can, uh, uh -huh. or is who's? Aha! Uh -huh. How do you identify who's instead of sister? Uh, because we are talking about uh, the sister of that guy. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good example. We talk about possession. The sister belongs to the guy. Okay. So who's the sister? Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, bye now. Hello, Jasmine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, teacher. Okay, help me out, please. I'm a little short with personnel. I don't know what's going on. What we have to do here is connect the halves of these sentences to make a whole sentence. For example, number zero, I read lots of books, comma, which takes up a good deal of my time. Takes up means you're taking the time. Mm -hmm. And I cross out letter F. Please, help me with number one. Um, he always travels first class which is extremely expensive and an airplane right it's expensive so mm -hmm. that's the reason why we connect with a his sister runs marathons i don't know <laughs> um very good, very good. Look, look. many different cities yes if you run a marathon maybe one day you run in i don't know san isidro another day you go to Makawasi, you know oh, different locations yeah different cities so it's always important not just to read the text but imagine imagine you know what is the outcome or, or, or the content inside between lines of course mm, they didn't even say goodbye which was quite rude i passed all my courses which is why we're having a party uh, yes i think this is the best way that parents have <laughs> to help you and push you to the limit you want the party? Well, okay, then. Well, then did, which meant I could go visit with my friends. I don't know. Well, come again? I couldn't hear you. You were breaking up. You said number four, um, you want to change your mind? No, it can be D or it can be oh, uh, B. B or D. B or D. Let's see B. Which is why we're having a party. Mm. Yes. Yes, I think also, yes. But maybe if we do that. Okay, let's try that. What about if we change it? It could be the case, right? Let's just use me. Okay. So I got, it's always important. I know it probably take up time, but correct, um, mark this one so that you're already used so you don't repeat them. So for example, letter A is already done, letter G. All right, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Number five. Uh, it's his birthday, uh, which meant I could go with visa with my friends, D. Well, then I would like to have my friend uh, having birthdays very often because I could <laughs> But it's not the case because it says it's his birthday. What is a possible answer for somebody's, somebody's birthday? So yeah. maybe you see and you take a decision. All right, now it's better this one than the other one. It's okay, but this is more like a puzzle. You can play between. So number five goes back, letter B goes back to number five. And for number four, what's letter? 
D. I think it was letter D. Yes, okay. We mm -hmm. just put it. But it's okay to play around. We have lots of time to do it, so it's fine. Okay, and the last option is letter C. C. Yeah, it's correct. He says he's he's met the king, or he has met the king, which can't be true. No? He's, an, he's a liar. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Now we do exercise four. This is the topic of the week, I think, or last week's too. Uh, you know, when we have relative pronouns and we can omit them. We can mm -hmm. omit them and when not. And one easy way to do it or to identify is when you know that there's a subject and a verb uh, coming up. Okay. Example zero can help you. The immigrant who I met last week was very nice. It's okay. But I can also omit it and say, um, the immigrant I met last week was very nice. In this review, I can tell you that the reason we can omit it is because here we have a subject in I and also a verb, which can carry on or can continue the message. In the case you don't have those, you can never omit it because it's important because now this will be taking the place of the subject. Okay, let's do number one. Okay, um, the pilot who saved the plane is a hero. Um, the, the, I think it's good. Okay, why? Why do you think we don't have to cross it out? Um, because um, there's no... Uh, uh, the, the pilot saved the plane, he's a hero. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, he's not coherent. Oh. But the, the good thing to remember here, Marcelo, is if we take out who, imagine this, we don't have a subject like in number in number zero. Uh -huh. I meant. But this is very important because it's functioning as a subject. We cannot take a subject from a sentence. Uh -huh. And that's why it's not possible to take it out. Uh -huh. Good call. Now, mm -hmm. Number two, please. There it's it's good. It's I, good, it's, right? We should not take it out because uh -huh. there's no subject and this is fu functioning as a subject. Okay, number three. Where is the passport? Um that's yes um it's uh that isn't necessary okay so we take it out that's correct why is it necessary because we have the subject exactly. and the verb afterwards mm, i don't think she's the same woman that we spoke to on the phone it's good so here's subject we and the verb spoke we don't need so we mm -hmm. have to like that okay and number five please Mm, that's where we first met. Um, I don't know. Mm. No, you're not sure on that one? Mm. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, let, let me zoom it in. Okay. Number five. That's where we first met. Okay, we talk about the place. So let's see if we omit this one. That's we first met. But if I say that could be not just a place, maybe that's uh, the occasion, that is the time, that is the day, the mm. anniversary, I don't know. Or that's the bad man who introduced us, <laughs> you know, he's uh, responsible for us meeting uh, that day. So it's important to use it. So in that case, we cannot omit it. Uh, okay. Case. First, relative pronouns are who, which, where, that, and also whose. In this mm -hmm. case, it's important because it's, it's, in, it's yeah, it's, it's, you need it to know what is the place or in this okay. place, where is the place. Okay. Thank you very much, Marcelo. Number five. Combine the sentences without using a relative pronoun. Okay. This is faster. We can combine in order to put together and also make our speech fluent. It's better to be fluent than just stay in very slow and try to say something we can't we get some confusions on that uh the man is drinking tea he is my english teacher uh the man drinking tea is my english teacher uh the people at the beach are listening to the same music as me oh wait a minute now we change it to listening and uh -huh. it was listen uh listen Okay, I don't know about this one, but let's work with that. Listening to the same music, you know, as me. 
blah, 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 blah. Okay, Alessandra, I think we have to respect in this way uh, the tense. It says here, the people are at the beach. This is simple present or present simple, whatever we call it. They listen to the same music as me. They listen. Uh, so listen to the same music as me. Okay, yes. All right, so the, the people at the beach listen to the same music as me. Okay, perfect match. Thank you. And this is another example that we uh, have to follow. Continue with the tense and uh, respect that thing. Okay. Number two, please. Irene. Uh, Irene is a student working her way through col college. Mm -hmm. Yes, good job. So we have Irene as the subject of the sentence and we define her as is a student doing something for her life, <clears throat> right? She's working her way through college. So working her way through college. Okay, good job. The dog playing with mine is my friend. My friends, okay. We can finish this pos possessive uh, with apostrophe S without mentioning it. The, op the possession because the possession is here. They move here. The dog playing with mine is my friends. We're talking about two dogs. In previous sentence, the dog is playing with mine. It's another dog playing with my dog. And this is my friend's dog. So we put it together. The dog playing with mine is my friends. Good, good call. Number four, please. Uh, the TV on the table is broken. Very quickly, without reading the, the, the prompt. The TV on the table is broken. Yeah, easy to put. Mm. And how about number five? Uh, they are non-fiction books I like. They are non-fiction books I like. Okay. I like this part because you made some uh, movement. You changed the positions. We have this option, and for those of you are not using the chat but I kind of read your minds I could say in this one another option that could be the books I like are non-fiction correct it can work either way okay I, I thought I was good I was not expecting your answer Alessandra I was expecting the second one but I, I thought it was really good. Very impressive. Thank you. Okay, bye now. Please correct the mistakes from number one to number five. But please start with the first sentence as example. Read it, please. Okay, uh, the man which we met was my uncle. The man who we met was my uncle. Um, the class it lasts for two hours. It's very exciting. Yeah. The class, uh, which lasts, no, which lasts for two hours. Okay. Which lasts, oh, which lasts for two hours. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. Okay, let's take a look. In this sentence, the class which lasts for two hours is very exciting. I am a little confused because if I talk about the class and I give a definition, which is a defining relative class, it's okay not to use a commas. But what happens if this is not a definition. This is just an extra detail about the class. Mm -hmm. Let's think about that for a second. The sentence says, the class which lasts for two hours is very exciting. The question that I make is, this is a definition of the class or is giving an extra detail about the class? An extra detail? Aha, bingo. If there is an extra detail or an extra feature, we need to use a position, which is commas. 
We need to separate it in commas. What do you separate between commas? Uh, which class for two hours? Aha. Uh -huh. So it's like this. The class, comma, which lasts for two hours, comma, is very exciting. And this is a good example of a sentence that we call non-defining relative clause. Why is a non-defining or NDRC? It's an NDRC or non-defining relative clause because it's not defining. It's just giving you an extra detail about a class. And with this, I know that it's not a defining clause, it's a non-defining thing. So I just give it an extra detail, right? And that extra detail goes between commas. All right, let's try number two, please. Okay, my friend that juggles want to join my circles. And my friend, uh, comma, who juggles? Comma wants to join a circus. Amazing. This is the right sentence for a non-defining relative clause. We are not defining your friend, but we give something extra. You could have any friend and they, they probably want to join a circus or they want to join, uh, I don't know, a new adventure. Yes. But we specify something about it, some characteristic that is specific. This person juggles. He uses balls, he juggles with them, so he could be part of the circus, right? He juggles, he plays with, with objects. I do Tai Chi, that is a good way to relax. I do Tai Chi, uh, which is a good way to relax. Now, is it okay? Or do you want to change it? Is this a definition? Is this defining something? Or by the other hand, it's just giving an extra detail. Because if it's giving extra detail, then it needs a comma. Take a look at the first part. I do Tai Chi. All right, I am informing this, okay. But then there's another thing here. It's mm -hmm. a good way to relax. Okay, so these are two pieces of information. So I'm giving an extra detail. What are you supposed to do to separate? Mm -hmm, with commas. Yes. Where do we put the comma? In mm, before which? Exactly. So I do Tai Chi is the <clears throat> main idea. Tai Chi or the action of you know being part of Tai Chi is a good way to relax. So this is an extra detail, non-defining relative clause in comma. All right, let's do number four. And the guy is walking over there is my friend. And the guy comma who walking over there. The guy comma who walking over there. Comma is my friend. Okay, let's see. This is a good way to practice before the exam. Let's imagine that we have the exam here in front of us and we make these mistakes or we just, uh, I don't know, we feel in doubts. We are not sure about the answers. <laughs> if we talk about the guy walking over there, we are not giving a detail, we are defining, right? There are plenty of guys, yes. But specifically this one, the guy, the guy walking. All right, so because the guy walking over there, there is my friend. I don't say about him, for example. The guy, comma, who dresses crazily. Or the guy who has a Lamborghini, comma, is my friend. That would be nice too. Okay, the guy who has a Lamborghini, a Lambo car, is my friend. That would be an extra detail. But here, I don't think it's working in an extra detail. This is giving a definition. So for that reason, we should not use commas. The guy who, blah, 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 walking over there, is my friend and I am missing something here. What is it? The reduce relative clause. Remember, we talked about this one the other day. A reduce relative clause is when you use who, that, which, or where, and the verb to be. Okay, this little tandem, these two guys, who is, is called reduce relative clause. And it's called reduce because they're really short clauses. If I take it out, it still works fine. The guy walking over there is my friend. 
So I can either say the guy who is in parentheses because I know it's a reduced relative clause and I can take it out. Is my friend. Still, either way, with who is or without who is, it's not giving detail, it's defining. It's a defining relative clause. Okay, let's do number five, please. The square is in the city centers a port of beer. The square um, which is in the city center is comma? Is a comma? Is for, is a, no, is, no, 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 it's full of words. Oh, it's full of words. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Perfect match. Here we have another case of reduced relative clause, which plus is a verb to be. We can take it out. The square in the city center is full of birds. Yeah, but it's okay if we just use this parentheses. And I think we have finally picked it up. We did it. Good job, people. Thank you very much, Mardelli. You did a great job. Thank you so much. All right. With this, I, I think we are ready for the exam. Maybe we can have it tomorrow. What do you guys say? Nobody? Not even in the chat? Okay, I guess it's okay. We can have it tomorrow then. Oh, no battery. On Monday, says Andres Donaire. Oh, now everybody's waking up. How about Monday, says Gonzalo? Jimena Baluarte says, no. Angie says on Monday. So you guys want this exam on Monday. Sometimes there is a saying that I like to apply in these situations for you guys and and fifth B. Boom. All right, there you go. Have a good time. I'll see you when I see you. I see you tomorrow. Okay, you can go, you guys can go now. Bye everybody. Goodbye, goodbye teacher. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye.